We finished almost the entire planning step of the project management process. The last part we have to do is risk management. In this first session about risk management, we're going to look to some general principles related to risk management. What is risk about? What is the definition of risk? What types of uncertainties can we have? What is risk and organizations? Risk and probability? And how can we work with risk? Risk is in many parts of our life a normal thing when you play dice, when you gamble, when you go scuba diving, all things we have are related to some risk events. If you don't play the lotto, you cannot win. If you play, you can lose, but you can win. So a very important element in risk management, when we look at project risk management, we talk about threats and opportunities. Threats are negative risk events and opportunities are positive risk events. Risk is always present. Projects and risks are inseparable. We have to look at what can go wrong or what can be better. Like I said before, it's about threats and opportunities. When we look at risk management, we have to include probabilities and statistics to work with risks and to do estimations. The project manager should always be in control of the risks of the project. That's the statement from the PIMBOK. Risk management starts with planning, continues in execution and monitoring and control. The risk management process is iterative because we can have new risks appearing old risk disappearing and we have to review the risk situation of the project on a regular basis. What is risk in projects about? What are those positive or negative influences that can have an effect on the project? First of all, when we talk about the project and we go back to the early sessions of this course, and you remember the definition of project and project management, you may remember that in the definition of the project, there was a very specific word, unique. A project is something unique. It means something you didn't do before, or at least has a lot of new elements that you didn't know about before. So unique, means that there is a or can be a high level of risk. Risk management helps the team to identify what can go wrong and find solutions. One of the projects I was dealing with, we were looking at a data connection line and no data line was available for a certain site. We knew this risk very early in the project. We could work with the customer to find a solution until we obtained the normal data connection. So identifying these elements of risk helped us to guarantee a solution with other means. Also risk management is the set of processes to help the team to identify opportunities and find ways to exploit or enhance those opportunities. Once you know there are opportunities, you can find ways to get these opportunities happening. Here is a definition of risk according to the PIMBOK 6th edition. Project risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs has a positive or a negative effect on at least one project objective such as time, cost, scope and quality. 
An important element here is that the risk has to have an effect on at least one project objective. If there is a risk for a hurricane but it has no effect on any of your objectives, then it's not a risk for your project. When we talk about uncertainties, there are different types of uncertainties that can be defined. There are the known unknowns. We know from the nature of certain elements that the risk exists. When you're flying with an airplane, it's possible that your engine stops for a certain reason. That's a known unknown. An unknown unknown is something that happens that you don't know about, that didn't happen before. For example, when you're flying with an airplane in certain conditions, your engine stops because of icing. Icing conditions means that there is ice forming, for example, on your carburetor. If you didn't have this risk before, it's an unknown unknown. But from the moment you identified it, it becomes a known unknown. Known unknowns are defined every time when an unknown unknown happens. Acts of God are things we can not do about anything about. It happens. We have no influence on them. Let's have a look at some examples of risks that occurred with projects in the past. First one is the de Havilland Comet, a very advanced pressurized airplane that unfortunately had some flaws and it crashed after a number of cycles. The problem was found with the design of the windows. Another problem is the Tacoma Narrows suspension bridge, also called Galloping Gertie, because of the effect the wind had on the bridge. Finally, there were wind speeds which increased and the instability of the bridge also increased and finally it was broken into pieces. Some of you may remember the movie about Apollo 13 when some oxygen containers exploded and the ground crew had to find a solution to bring the crew back to Earth. The challenging disaster may be closer for many of you. When the rocket was launched, due to a problem in one of the engines, the rocket exploded. Then there is the Ariane 5, the first launch. The problem was that the engineers copied the navigation system of the Ariane 4 rocket. They didn't adjust the system to the specific dynamics of Ariane 5 and when the Ariane 5 rocket was launched for the first time it crashed. Then we know airplane cockpit procedures. You may have read some things about it, why we have two pilots, why pilots don't eat the same food in the cockpit, uh, why they have more than one system in the airplane, for example, double controls, double gyroscopes, double navigation systems in order to have a secure airplane that complies with the federal and joint aviation regulations. Risks and organizations. Well, organizations in many times tend to neglect risk in the project they do. This has a consequence that they're not prepared for risk events happening and they may have losses because of that. Projects may fail or they may even go bankrupt. In addition to that, because they don't do any project risk management, they will not identify additional opportunities. Of course, people tend to react to risks in different ways, depending on their experiences. What is your opinion about a spare wheel in your car? I ask this question 
many times when I have this course and I always get different reactions. Some people say, I don't need the spare wheel or the small spare wheel, the undersized is okay. And other people say, well, I definitely want to have a normal spare wheel. What is the reason? Well, their experiences. I had already many flat tires, so for me, a normal sized spare wheel is important. Other people never had the problem, so they don't see the need for the spare wheel or the undersized spare wheel. When we look at different companies or organizations, we may find that some of them are more risk aware. I already gave the example about aviation, but we also have gas and oil companies, space programs, and of course, many other companies deal with risk in a very serious and organized way. Risks, like we said, are uncertain events. So there is a probability of occurrence. There are some probability aspects that we have to consider and we have to use statistics to understand the nature of these events. When we look at variation, we have to look at common cause and special cause variation. Common cause, natural variation, is a variation which is natural to the system. We are not doing anything wrong. We can and we should not try to remediate it. Special cause variation, however, is because of a item or a process or something else that is wrong. Here we have to remediate it. One of the things we can use are PERT and three-point estimation techniques. We can also use other techniques like Monte Carlo analysis. Typically we use normal distributions, but we can also have other distributions and basically, we look at an average and a standard deviation, an average duration and a standard deviation related to that duration. How can we deal with risk? We can work with risks in a bad way or in a good way. The bad way is the ostrich method. You know that an ostrich puts its head in the ground when there is a danger. When there is a lion, the ostrich thinks, when I don't see the lion, it doesn't see me. Well, it doesn't work like that. Probably the ostrich is not able to tell us the story. The good way is to manage risks in a proactive way. We have to learn from the past, but we have to be adaptive to the way we apply these methods to projects. The way or the methods that we use should be proportional to the project size and risk evaluation. At the beginning of a project, it is possible to conduct a preliminary risk evaluation. Companies may set risk levels above which they don't accept projects. So this is already a first risk evaluation of the project. It's done in the beginning of the project, at the moment of the business case and after. There are a lot of modern tools available, programs, we have powerful computers that can work with Monte Carlo analysis. We have uh, crystal ball software, softwares that can be linked with existing packages. Risk is important, so we will see how to deal with risks, how to go through the project risk cycle, and what responses we have to take when we have identified those risks, how do we deal with them? A lot of things to do in this section. 
some statistics, some probability, some calculations, but you already did a lot of work in this course and I'm sure you will manage this without problems. See you in the next session.